having the, the NRA named the Uganda Armed Forces. He was in favor of Uganda People's Defense Forces. What were your arguments? Why were you basing your arguments? You see, there has been two tendencies in the country. There is a tendency that uh, an army is a force raised, trained to simply obey orders like machines, a group of robots. You look at an army like King's African Rifles or Uganda Rifles. These were armies whose task was simply to obey the colonial authority, even against the people of Uganda. Now, there is a second tendency which is saying that the army must be composed of conscious soldiers, whom when tomorrow there is a, 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 an unpopular and anti-people leadership, and the army and it, it receives instructions to go against the people or against the constitution, the army must stand out and oppose orders against, say, massacring people or overthrowing constitutions or turning against the, the, the constitution. So we feel that the name uh, reflects, and strongly so, your mission. What is your mission? Our mission as NRA was to resist misrule in Uganda. We are now saying that a name like Uganda People's Defense Forces, the name Uganda reflects the name of the country. People's Defense is your mission, the government of Uganda. And the reward forces is to cater for your expansion uh, of the army. In case tomorrow you want to build marines, infantry, navy, artillery, you don't have to change the name. So the name forces caters for all that. And the word Uganda Armed Forces, to me, is very lacking because armed, everybody's armed. Even robbers are armed, uh, highway people are armed. So armed must be purposeful. So I supported the people's defense because it has a meaning, it has a political signal. It sends to the soldiers that never again do you turn your guns against the people of Uganda.